everybody. We are going to have a little late start. Um, Jackie, Jackie Stewart fell outside, oh. so we're going to wait. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Um, today, I, we will pray for Jackie Stewart um, and all those who are taking care of her. In the meantime, I'd like to welcome all of you, all visitors, all regular, all regular members. And, um, if you drove, please don't forget your pass for your car. We do not want anyone to get booted. After the service, there will be coffee in the lounge where it will be warm. Um, we have an announcement. Hal has an announcement. Good morning, Oakland Hall. Uh, we are getting to that season of Christmas season, which will include the Christmas gardens and these are annual, what we call angel tree uh, gift drive or gifts for the children in the local shelter. And this year it'd be the local shelter of Spring Cedar Shelter, which we did last year down near the, um, towards the airport and uh, Ronald McDonald House. Uh, and what we do is for those who are not familiar with the process, we ask you to sign up to buy gifts. We will print the next month on the uh, ages of the kids that are at the Oakview Places. Sign up for gifts, and we will bring in the gifts, and we have the gifts that's poured in by the 15th of December. We were having a small party at the Ronald McDonald House for the kids, so we probably will not have a party at the Springfield Shelter, but we'll try to be worked out. We used to years ago, if you were around for a while, to play a, a, a large party at the Briarwood Shelter, Family Shelter. The uh, situation there has changed a little bit. We'll do that, but we will be gathering the gifts as we always have. So the idea is that you to sign up for that. You can sign up online. There's a flyer in the back of the church with the information on that. Some of you may be a little uncomfortable with that. We will be setting up a table at the coffee hour, so those of you who might have a little difficulty signing up online should give a gift. Uh, we can help you with there. And then ask you to get the gift for the child that you're going to be closing, uh, and then to bring that gift before the 16th of the, or the 15th of December, and then we'll be sending it to the uh, kids' group. Um, we've been doing this for many years. Church and the Lord's been amazed by the generosity of the people in the church. And many people sign up either once a gift for kids or sign a couple of years worth of gifts. And um, this year is no different in terms of the need. It's still there, and it's good. And that's what we're trying to figure out what we're going to do about it. So get the flyer. If you have any questions, the number to call, or we'll be here uh, in, in the, at the coffee hour for the next uh, couple, couple of weeks. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can call it. You can ask for any gift. Participate. If you enjoy it, there's something to look forward to, and something that the church has added to the library, and then it's part of our tradition. So we look forward to it. So we would like to help in that regard. Thank you. Thank you. And Kay Finch has an announcement. On December 2nd, which is a Saturday, you are cordially invited to help clean the sanctuary. Uh, it's hard work. If, if you would like to bring your own rubber glove, that would be great. Uh, we've brought extra. Uh, if you would like to bring your own plastic pail, uh, that's great. Uh, we have some and uh, uh, brought one extra. Um, this is always a lot of fun. Our, our friend Brenda Maurer organized this. 
uh, in, in the fall and in the spring for uh, serious uh, tornadoes and that kind of thing. And let me know we have a blast. Uh, the sanctuary is well cared for by uh, the custodian, Joshua. But uh, this is like a, a, like a special call for you and for me um, to support this lovely sanctuary. Uh, we will, of course, you, if you want to bring a good vacuum cleaner, uh, we actually have the vacuum cleaners that are uh, uh, upright. Uh, attachment, a, a small vacuum cleaner with attachments is great. We will have the church and a vacuum cleaner, and we will have good snacks, and uh, uh, probably shortly after noon, pizza. You are welcome to stay and work until you run out of steam. <laughs> if you have uh, plans at 9 a.m., which is when we're really starting, uh, uh, you can come at 11. Uh, energy, uh, elbow grease, which is what my mother used to call us. Um, thank you. Thank you, Kay. And following, the week after, there will be the greening of the sanctuary on the 9th, from 9 to 1. So after you've cleaned it and it's beautiful and sparkly, we can put greens all around. So please join us on the 9th. A uh, few more announcements. Today, there's the uh, interfaith, Thanksgiving interfaith service on Sunday, November 19th. That's today at 4 p.m. at the Forest Hills Jewish Center. Please join us. Our choir and the band will be rehearsing. We'll be rehearsing and playing. We'll be performing. So it should be a good time, and we welcome you all. And then on the back of that announcement are the Advent and Christmas events the, from the first Sunday of Advent through Christmas and New Year's. And please note, on Sunday, December 24th, um, there will only be the evening worship services at 4 and 9. Please join us. Um, and finally, um, there are people listed in the bulletin to pray for, so please pray for them and include Jackie Stewart in your prayers. <coughs> I want to add my welcome to all who are worshiping with us here in person and online this Sunday before Thanksgiving, and a special welcome to those worshiping with us for the first time. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We've already heard our sister Jackie has had a fall. The sirens we just heard uh, uh, is indeed the ambulance picking her up, so we thank God for that response and for Cindy Nauer and others who have been tending uh, to her. And let me tell you, she's very cognizant, uh, very aware. So I, I hope we can be guardedly optimistic uh, and expect we can be. We thank God for the whole of creation and for giving us life. We thank God for calling us to life and life abundant. And on this Sunday before Thanksgiving, we pray. O oh God of grace, O oh God of love, O oh God of light, we ask that your Holy Spirit be on this service and on all of us as we gather to sing, to pray, to offer praise, and to hear your word for us and our world. Show us your way, fill us with the hope and joy that are ours in you, and let everybody say, Amen. Holy One, you have been our God from generation to generation. 
Before the universe exploded and the earth was without form, you have been with us. We enter your presence to worship and praise your holy name. Mighty one, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Teach us to count the days with joy and appreciation for all your marvelous works and steadfast love. Everlasting God, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Good morning, everyone. Let us remain standing. Turn to your pilgrim hymnal, hymn number 462. You'll notice these are the words alone printed at the top of the page. The tune is 461. The words are 462. And we'll be, we'll be singing does instead of doth. God, our maker, does provide. together in the prayer of confession is found in your bulletin. I will begin. Sovereign God, we confess that life is hard. We don't always make the best choices, and all too often we realize the options before us are lacking. We're overwhelmed with the enormity of the world's problems. Help us seek wisdom and clarity, compassion and presence, hope and peace over shallow victory, material gain, and violence of the mind, body, or spirit. Bless us to be peacemakers, hope sharers, and love spreaders in the world for our neighbors and for your glory. 
be with us in this brief time of reflection, O oh God. And be with us as we sing. Siblings in Christ, our God is a God of grace who forgives us even before we ask and who frees us that all from all that would hold us down or hold us back. Live in that freedom, live in that peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Please share with one another a sign of peace. Today, we have only one scripture, re scripture reading, and it's taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. Jesus is speaking. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one to each according to his ability. Then he went away at once. The one who had received the five talents went off and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And then the one who had received one talent came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here is what was yours. But his master replied, 
you wicked and lazy slave. You knew did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with, with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But those who have nothing, even what they have, will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. God bless the hearing of this word. So I know a number of our families are away. I'm not going to ask the kids who are here to come up, but I want you to answer my questions if you would, and maybe kids of all ages will get involved. So let's get started this way. What, what special day is coming up this week? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. All right. So of course I'm going to ask us to all go around and say what we're saying. No. <laughs> but I do... I do want to talk to the kids and, and to kids of all ages and just ask you a few things. Anybody here like music? Yeah, yeah okay. How about playing sports? Yeah. How about a favorite subject in school? Like reading or math? You're gonna what's your favorite? What is it? Science! Cool. You got a favorite? You like them all. <laughs> now, here's the, here's the question to, to kids of all ages. If God made it so that you like those things, and then you just, like, never do any of those things, don't even care about them? Do you think that would make God happy? No, right? That doesn't make any sense. You like it, you're good at it, it's cool, it's interesting, doesn't hurt anybody, and even better, lots of people like it and are happy. You like to do it, it makes you happy. That makes God happy too. That's what our story, that's what our parable shows. And that's a pretty great way of giving thanks, right? Do the things that God made you to do. Make sense? So kids of a certain age, time to go to Sunday school? And thank you for being here. All right, and thank you teachers and Rachel, our coordinator. Thanks all. If I can untangle this. Now. As we get going, I want to pick up on something we saw last week in another one of Jesus' parables. Jesus, in these parables, in these stories, can be pretty harsh. Last week, the story ended with the main character shutting out five people who wanted to come in. They were pleading to come in. Main character shut them out. And here, the story ends with the main character not shutting out, but throwing out someone into the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Wait, outer darkness, weeping and gnashing of teeth sounds worse than being stuck on a subway car packed with people in between stations in the dark with no air circulating. There are so many layers of meaning and lots of ways to come at this parable of Jesus. And maybe the simplest and maybe the best is just what we were talking about with the kids. 
And in our language, I think this is really cool, it works well because in fact, the Greek word for talent, which was a name for a lot of money, a whole lot of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars, even a million, some scholars estimate, by today's standards, one talent. That word morphs into the ancient Latin word for talent, also meaning boatloads of money, which then morphed into the medieval Latin word talent, meaning whatever is of value to you or even what you're good at. And of course that turned into our word for talent, what you like to do and what you are skilled at. So you can almost do a one-for-one -one translation or interpretation of this parable. God, if I can assume it's God, this person or master or owner of property, gives us each a set of talents worth a lot. And then each of those persons uses what God gives them or doesn't. So what does God want you to do? Use the gifts, the talent or talents that God gives you? Use, act on, build on, put it out there. What God gave you, your interests, your skills, your love for the world and for others and for yourself. Engage God's creation, engage God's, uh, all God's people, engage others with what God gave you. I hope you notice this great line in the parable. It's actually repeated, I think, so that we don't miss it. God says it first to the first one who did a lot with what he was given and then says exactly the same thing to the second one who also did a lot with what he was given. Now, by the way, I'm saying he because the grammar in, in the biblical language suggests that, but who knows? She, they, whoever. God says to those who put to use, who put into practice what they're given, as we heard it, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You've been trustworthy in a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Isn't that brilliant? Enter into the joy of your master. You could, and I'd argue perhaps better translated because of the way we use and hear the word Lord, enter into the joy of the Lord. We kind of forget, we modern or postmodern Protestant, very practical people that we are, we kind of forget how there's an ancient, time-honored notion of God enjoying and knowing and caring how to enjoy simply and profoundly to enjoy, to feel joy, to show joy. We see this throughout cultures and understandings of God, and we certainly see it in the Bible. God creates the world, then kicks back, takes it all in. The sun sets, the sun rises, the shorelines, the mountain peaks, the land creatures, the sea creatures, the flying things, the people. Takes it all in and announces what? What does God say? It is good. That's a quote from Genesis chapter 1, the first chapter in the Bible. And that story, that sentiment gets repeated over and over again in the Bible, mostly in the Psalms, over and over again and in other places. And in another equally wonderful and less known creation story in Proverbs chapter eight, it says something even more that ties in to this parable. It says that God delights and rejoices. You can hear the word joy in rejoice. God takes joy in the created world. Indeed, some scholars say that the Hebrew language here at the end of the creation story in Proverbs 8 even suggests that God is playing or frolicking 
Such is the joy of God in creation and in us. Think about that. Think about that vision, that image of God and just have fun with it. That notion of God being gleefully, frolickingly, is that a word? Joyful. We Christians get a lot right, but we also blow it on some things. And this is one of those things. This sense of joy and delight, godly joy and delight that we so often miss. The joy and delight of creation. The joy and delight of being in creation and in being part of creation. The joy and delight of relationship with the created world, with God, taking part in God's joy and with each other. So sadly, for a lot of Christians and Christian movements, there's a tendency to come at God, understand God, understand relationship with God, just like that last guy in the parable did. God is vengeful. God is angry. God is just waiting to stick it to me. God is going to send me to hell if I don't get it right. So I better not blow it. So, so let me just do nothing. If, if I do nothing, then I can't do anything wrong. Then I can't get in trouble. So what does the guy do? He buries. He literally digs a hole and buries the talent, the gift that God gives him. Hides it away so no one can see it or enjoy it, including him. Forget God for a moment. He, this guy himself, gets nothing out of the deal. And what does God do in the story? God gives him what he expects, or what he should have expected from that vengeful God that's in his head. Interesting, notice the graphic language. God does to him what he had already done to himself. He had already cut himself off from everything and everyone. He was already gnashing his teeth in all that worry about what God might do to him if he gets it wrong. Rather than, rather than going out and living and enjoying and putting into practice the gift that God had given him. And just reflect on that for a moment. What is it that God gave him? that God gives us? Well, in totality, it's life itself. And all that God made him to be, God's child, beautiful and worthy. And he did As we start to bring this to a close, let me go here with this. So often as Christians, and it's embedded into our popular culture in, I think, very harmful ways, we think of faith as a kind of formula to get us into heaven. It's all about getting into heaven. There's nothing wrong with getting into heaven. I look forward to it. But what the Bible teaches us over and over and over again, and certainly in this parable, is that God puts us here, here and now, to live faithfully here and now. I've already quoted the bit where God says, well done, good and trustworthy slave, you have been trustworthy. 
What's lost in translation, and some of you of my age or older may even have it in your head. Does anybody know, well done thou? Yeah, well done thou good and faithful servant. Sometimes I make fun of old fashioned language and old fashioned translations. That one gets it right because the word for trustworthy and the word for faithful or faithfully is exactly the same word in the biblical Greek. Those first two who use, who put into practice, who operationalize what God has given to them, they're faithful. They're being faithful. They're showing and living and enjoying faith. The one who sits on his thumbs and hides away what God made him and what God gave him. God puts us here to live faithfully now. Don't need to wait to get to heaven. And you certainly don't want to hold back for fear you'll do something not quite right and so not get to heaven or some crazy thing like that. No. Go about faithfully being who you are, who God made you to be and how God outfitted you with the talent God gave you here and now. It's good for you. It's good for the world. And God likes it. That's what the parable says. And so, let all of God's talented children gathered here say together, Amen. 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 Whoops. Now let us turn back to our pilgrim hymnals. Hymn number 404, Take My Life and Let It Be. Let us all stand and sing together. You can remain standing as we enter into a time of prayer, and I bring a couple of updates and a couple of new prayer requests. As we've heard, behold, Jackie's. 
stewards very much in prayer following a fall outside just before the service. Uh, as she's, I, I hope, at the hospital already um, being taken care of. Now, we've been praying for and have missed our brother Richard Palatico here in church in a coffee hour after the past several weeks. There he is. So great to have you back. She's wonderful. And our sister Amelia Everett is preparing for a scheduled medical procedure on Tuesday. We hold her in our prayers. Let us pray. O God of grace, O God of life and life abundant, we thank you for the joy, the sheer joy, which is ours in you, if we would only know and if we would only show it. We thank you for all you make us to be and for all you call us to be. We thank you for every gift that you give us. We thank you for our church, the church in the gardens, and for all the ways we work together with each other and with your Holy Spirit to share your good news, your care, and your joy. We pray, O oh God, for our world, that your wisdom, your love, and your justice would guide the decisions of those who would legislate who would govern, and who would make the decisions for war or peace. We pray for an end to hunger and to homelessness. We pray for access to health care. We pray for employment opportunities. We pray for safety for all and for an end to the fear and hatred that leads to division and violence among peoples. We pray that all would know that all of us are made in your image, and that you delight, take joy in the whole human race. And we pray, O oh God, for all who are sick and recovering from illness and injury or preparing for medical procedures, including Philia, Christopher, Karen, Amelia, Millicent, Richard, Noriko, Patrick, Marcelina, Jean, Connie, Anne, Charlotte, Dora, Jackie, and Jack. We pray for Kevin and his family and friends. We pray for all those in residential care, remembering especially our sister Hannah, who's right here. And we pray for all who are grieving or suffering loss of any kind, remembering especially all people suffering loss from war and terrorism and all forms of violence and aggression. All other prayers, O oh God, we bring to you as we hold them in silence or as we call them out aloud now. Hear all these prayers, O God, and hear us as we pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us.
All that we have, we have from God. All that we are is God's gift to us. We respond in kind, sharing the joy, and in so doing, increasing the joy for ourselves and others. Give to the mission and ministry of the church in the garden. The ushers will now move among us. God, we bring the gifts of ourselves, our talents, and our abundance. Magnify and multiply these offerings to meet the needs before us. Continue to develop the spirit of generosity among us and make us good stewards as we joyfully use these gifts and talents in your name. Amen. Amen. And as we, we turn now to our green hymnal, the sing hymnal 216, give thanks. And just in case I don't have an opportunity to say it enough, I, I give thanks to all the musicians who dedicate their time and talents to 
making music here at the church. So thank you. Uh, and we'll hear, hear them on full display later today if you can make it to the interpretive service. Let us all sing Give Thanks. Before we receive the benediction, let me remind us all of coffee that's in the lounge. Richard's not sitting there anymore, so he's in the lounge already, I think. Uh, so thanks to everybody who set that up. And uh, thank you so much, Sonny, for first of all, thanking all the musicians. Thanks to you. And thank you for reminding us this afternoon. I don't think we've sold that enough. The interface service itself is all we need to sell, but you guys are all a part of it, the choir, band, you, so thank you so much for that. We're really looking forward to that. Thank you all. And now, as you go out to live and to be and to do just what God made you to be and to do, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you joy and peace. Amen. <laughs>